In this video, I'll be talking about Boudicca's Rebellion and its effects on Britain. So, like and subscribe. My, and I can't say like and subscribe. In this video, I'll be talking about Boudicca's Rebellion and its effects on Britain. And we'll be answering the question, was the rebellion serious? So, before I get into the rebellion, I've got to give a bit of background. So in 43 AD, Claudius invades England. And he has very little opposition from the Britons. He can really easily face it. The biggest opposition he has is actually from a river that the Britons are trying to stop him from getting over. But because they've trained specialized troops to be able to swim the river, they swim over and they, they, they get annihilated and they get killed. And one of the, one of the towns the biggest one in the country at the time is Colchester. Claudius takes Colchester by riding four elephants through the middle of the town with his army and this is after a siege. So the people of Britain obviously will never have seen elephants so they'd be absolutely terrified of them. And then after this Colchester becomes like they kick all the Britons out and it becomes like a retirement home really for fallen soldiers. And the Assini tribe, who are the neighbours to it, they get their land taken off them when the leader dies, and Boudicca, who was the leader's wife, has her, uh, gets the land taken off her, all the daughters and herself sexually assaulted by the Romans, and it's, and obviously they're not very happy about this. Since 66 AD, Boudicca starts a rebellion. Now, her and the people that used to live in Colchester are not very happy with the Romans. So they go and they try to take Colchester back. And the Romans in Colchester, the response is really poor. The garrison there ha can, can't do anything against them because the army is too big. And the relief force is 200 men with shovels. So they pretty much send the county council around to deal with Boudicca, which it doesn't work. And they all, get they all get locked in the temple of the divine Claudius. Now, even the name of this temple is a bit of a kick in the teeth of the Britons. Because the temple of the divine Claudius is named after the person who took away their city. So they wouldn't be very happy with this. So the Romans are stuck in this temple for a few days. And then the rebels realise they can just burn it down if they want to. So they set fire to it, they kill everyone. Another Roman relief force appears, but this, this one is defeated and only the general and the cavalry manage to escape. This is a massive defeat for the Romans. The Romans are not happy. At this time, the Roman army is in a campaign in Wales, trying to take um, land over there. So they're very distracted, but the army is coming back and the governor of Britain is trying to um, get as many troops as he possibly can. So at this point, the Roman governor is uh, pretty worried because he's got a massive rebellion. Some sources say it was as many as 100,000 people, but that is probably not true as all the accounts are Roman. So obviously, if you're Roman, you're going to want to say a higher number because that makes the defeat look better and makes themselves look more competent. So the Roman governor, uh, he decides he's gonna gather troops. And to do this, he has to leave both St. Albans and London, which are at this time the two biggest towns as Colchester is burned down completely. And it's been reduced to ashes, there's none of it left. So he, uh, he decides he's going to abandon them. And this is a mistake because the rebels come into these and they burn part of it down and they slaughter civilians. And obviously the Romans wouldn't have been very happy at this. But the army is still in Wales, so they can't do anything against it. So the Roman governor, who at this time is Paulinus, he gets together a group of 10, 10 to 20,000 men and he marches up Watland Street to meet the rebels. It's not known 
well on Watland Street, this battle happened. And it's a very contested topic. So Paulus, he decides he doesn't want to be like the other Roman generals. He realizes he can't just charge at them and beat them with their superior with their superior army, as he's got way less numbers. The rebels have about five times the amount of men in theaters at an at like a conservative guess. Like some accounts will say it's about ten times more, even though those probably can't be trusted. I mean, it's oh, it's a lot of men more. So he decides, I'm not going to charge at them, because that'd be a bad idea. And my other, the other important people, who have fought my other generals, they have done that, and it didn't work. So he chose an area with very thick force behind him and to the sides, so that they can't come behind him. And he plays himself on a hill. The rebels, led by Boudicca, they turn up. And they get very confident. They've beaten the Romans so many times by this time that they're just overconfident. They place their baggage train with the horses and carts behind the battle. And this will have had their wives, their children, a lot of the important possessions on it. It'll have been very important to them, these baggage trains. But they're placed very tightly behind their Brutusian rebels. This should tell us that they thought they were invincible. They thought we cannot possibly lose this battle. We're going to have no form of escape. And they just, they didn't think this through properly. So the rebels, who were used to guerrilla warfare, guerrilla warfare had worked their entire time. They decided for this battle against the biggest Roman force, we're not going to do that. We're just going to fight them. This could be because of the size. At this time, feeding an army of this size, it would have been quite difficult. They would have had to have lived off the land. They can't stay in one place for long enough because if they live off the land in one place, then they're just going to take all the food out of it and they're not going to be able to survive. This could, so this could be a part of the reason why they decide we've got to fight them now. Or it could have been Boudicca's just overconfidence with the previous wins that she had. And the strategy they choose for this battle is run at the Romans and kill them. In the complete opposite of this, the Romans have made a shield wall on top of the hill. And as the rebels run up the hill, they get completely slaughtered. And then as they try to retreat, they get stopped by their baggage train, which they placed there before. And the Romans just kill them all. Everyone they can lay their hands on. They kill the, they kill the rebels, they kill their wives, their children. They even kill their animals. Which is really rare to happen in the Roman times, as these would have, cut, these would have been worth money. You know, they could have sold these off. They could have even have sold like, the wives, the children and even the rebels as slaves as the Roman slave economy was massive at the time. But they were so annoyed at them because they killed Romans. They killed so many Romans that they just killed everything they could lay their hands on. This battle is an absolute slaughter for the rebels. I mean, altogether, they have about 80,000 dead. 80,000 men, women and children. The Romans have 400. So the Romans have really easily beaten them. But Paulinus decides this isn't enough. He wants more. So he decides it's a good idea to just go and start burning down villages, killing Britons. And he does this so much that Nero tells him to stop. This is the same Nero who made Christians into human candles and kicked his pregnant wife to death for apparently no reason. Yeah, and this is a person that's telling him to stop. Now this probably wasn't on the grounds of human rights. Like Nero probably didn't care. But the killing of the Britons 
posed the threat of another rebellion because they would have been so angry at the Romans that they had another rebellion, even though the consequences before were really dire. This rebellion is also probably the reason that the year of the four emperors didn't end in a rebellion in Britain. The year of the four emperors was the first civil war that Rome had had in a while. So the so rebels in Germania and Gaul, which is modern day Germany and France, they decided they were going to take this opportunity and they rebelled and they were really successful. And the Romans were nearly pushed out of France. It was a massive defeat for them. And eventually the Romans beat them. But it posed a massive threat to them. And this could have happened in Britain as well. Because of Britain's strong connection to these parts. The Druid leaders from Gaul and Germania. They came over to Britain to get training. If their religion was close, to get, close together, they would have had a good connection with them. So this begs the question, why did they not rebel? And this is probably because of how brutally they were treated. They thought, it's not worth it. We're better the way we are. We're going to forget about them. Boudicca is now seen in modern day Britain as a bit of a folk hero. I remember Boudicca as a person who rebelled against Roman control and it's really like a story of British spirit. But in reality, Boudicca could have easily won. She just got way too overconfident. And she had the perfect guerrilla warfare force. She decided to use them for a pitched battle, which was obviously not their speciality. Thanks for watching this video, please like and subscribe if you want and please put in the comments what you want to see me cover next, if there's anything you want me to cover next and also say if you want me to continue these videos because I haven't posted one in a while.